This is the second lecture on integers, and um, it's going to go into specifically how we can use integers for counting. Um, in the in the challenge that I gave you, I asked you to show a way that you could use it for counting. Um, I think a decent number of people came up with um, good plans, whether they followed them through completely or not. Um, and and we certainly had a couple people that I don't think used them for counting. They had integers, but those integers weren't actually counting anything. So uh, so we are going to use integers for counting. We're going to go through a couple examples. So it, it's for counting. So we expect it to to start keeping track of something. So the most obvious one is counting how many times you've done something. So I set this up, and I have an integer, and I use my name. And I don't have to use my name, but I'm just making a point. The name, the word that you pick doesn't matter. So I'm telling the code, hey, there's going to be an integer. I'm calling it Cormier, and we're setting it equal to zero, right? It's not the best name to use. This could be, you know, this, this could be... Um, trips this could be motions right so lots of times you probably want to give it a name that matches with it but i think there was some confusion where if you did integer and call the time it's like the computer knew what it was you're talking about and it doesn't right it's just going to use this word from here on out and then i wait two seconds so it takes two seconds before the thing starts moving and then i ask the question while this integer is less than 10 i want it to do this stuff which is what which is move forward for a second move backward at a slower speed for half a second and then add one to what I had before and then ask the question again am I less than 10 if the answer is yes go through it again add another one to my integer so when I start this program the integer is equal to zero so is it less than 10 yes it's at zero go forward go back add one to it now my integer is at one is that less than 10 yes go forward go back Add another one I'm at two go forward, go back, and I'm at three. So it's going to keep going through. I read. So this process is going to keep going until we get to 10, right? So basically it's going to, you have to count zero, it's going to make 10 trips. And then when it asks the question, is it less than 10, the answer will be no. So it's out of the loop, the program is done. So this is a, something where we're just counting how many times we've done something. Um, when I run it, it's going to look something like, hold on, it's going to look something like this. Now, I didn't download it, so we have to download it. There we go, but there we go, which is the exact same thing you just saw. So let's download it. Let's run it. And then it should go back and forth 10 times. There's one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the program's over. So it did just what we wanted it to do. Let's go ahead and pause that and let's go back to the code. So why do I want to do this for a counter? Well, it's going to be helpful if I have a pretty complex motion and, and it's got repetitive parts in there and I'm not sure how many times. Maybe I don't know if I want it to do 10 times. Now, first of all, even for this code, if I wanted it to repeat this 10 times, the other thing I could do is write this 10 times, which is just a lot of code. It's a lot of repetitious code. Um, and then if it's not the distance I wanted, if it's not the number of times I put it into my code and I'm like, oh, no, I wish I went 12 times and I got to do it two more times. Right. Or oh, I wish I did it seven times. Now I got to take three off. Right. It just allows for more work where really, if I'm not sure how many times I want to do this, I can just change it here and change the 10 to a seven. Now I'm done. Right. Oh, I really wanted to go 12 times. Change it to a 12. Now I'm done. Right, so this works out very nicely because I can just change how many times I want to do it right here. Then I could do more of them if I had more motions that were repetitive like this. So it works out nicely because really I put it in a while statement and that's really all I have to do is change this number to change how many times it does this. So there is one way to use a counter. It's counting how many times your robot does whatever process it is. Now. It's a counter, so I could also use it to count things if I want to. Um, 
and and someone made one well matt matt made one that was great it counted the number of lines that it saw so i'm going to do one slightly different and i am going to look at let's see let's bring this up so we could try and see the whole thing actually i'm not gonna be able to see the whole thing um, but that's okay but we are going to look at a situation like this oh i didn't really want it to run back it up where I have my robot sit in the middle of a circle, and then there's a book. And I'm going to make this thing spin, and I'm going to count how many times it sees this book. Now, this could work in a few ways. Maybe I put this robot on like a pool table or somewhere else, and I make it spin, and I make it do one complete trip, and it counts how many things it sees, right? So as this thing is moving around, it can keep track of how many different things it sees. So I picked a table that only has one thing, so I'm going to make this spin, and it's going to count this book every time it goes around so if it starts here it'd be like one two three so it's counting it's counting how many times it sees the book so let's go back to the code that i was looking at and there's a second part to this but let's just focus on that right now so first of all i need to figure out how long i want to make it spin for so i'm going to make it spin for this amount of time so this looks like 20 seconds looks like 20 seconds so in order to do that First thing I do is I made my integer. This time I called it count. And count makes sense because I'm going to be counting something, right? Again, doesn't have to be count. could be any word I want as long as it fits the rules of the previous video. Um, but that really leaves the door open for a lot of options. And then I wait a few seconds to start the whole thing. And then I, I uh, reset my timer. And now I start asking questions. When the timer is less than 20, what do I want it to do? Well, I want it to spin. And while it's spinning, I have the sonar on and it's asking a question if the sonar is less than 80 so now to understand some of this i had to play with right i had to play with and get it right and i expect you guys to have to play with it and get it right whatever it is that you're working on i you know you're probably not going to be able to just plug it in and it's going to work perfectly right so this took some trial and error without a doubt but the overall concept is i want it to spin and while it's spinning i want the sonar to be looking and this is basically asking do you see something, right? So the question is, is the sonar value less than 80, which means something is within 80 centimeters, and it's not negative one. And I have to put that in there because if we remember, when the sonar sees nothing, it puts in a value of negative one. So without this, this answer would always be yes because it would be saying, oh yeah, it sees negative one. Well, that's less than 80. I see something. Not true, right? So the, my question is, is something less than 80, but is it also not negative one? If that's true, then I add one to my count. My count was zero. As soon as it sees something, we add one to it. Now my count's one. Then I had to put a weight here because as it's spinning, right, I don't want it to keep counting because it's going to ask this question over and over again, right? This, this loop that it's in takes a very small fraction of time. It takes milliseconds. So I don't want this to like count how long it sees it. So, so basically what I'm saying is, if, if this was the, the robot and it was here and it was spinning and it was spinning, it would say, okay, I see it, 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 I see it. And every time it says I see it, it would add another counter. So it's not really counting how many things it sees. It's basically counting how long it's looking at it while it's going. And that's not what we're looking for. So in my code, what I did is after it counts it, wait six tenths of a second, which means by the time it looks again, it will already have passed the book. And then it'll be coming around to count it again. So I put a little delay before it starts looking again. So it'll keep counting for 20 seconds. And then I have it come to a stop. Now the second part is something completely different, but it's going to use that count to do something else. So now it's going to establish a counter. It's going to say, okay, I've seen seven books. I've seen the book seven times. And then basically what I have it do here is it's going to spin one direction, spin the other one. And it's going to keep doing that until the count, whatever it counted up to, gets back down to zero. So now I did just the opposite. The count equals the count minus one. So let's say it saw it seven times. The first time through, it's going to do it once. It's going to take one. Now it's six times. And it's five times. And it's four times. And it's three times. And as soon as this count gets to the value that counts down to the value I want, it's going to say, okay, I'm done. I'm done doing this. So... We're going to see it count how many times it sees the book, and then we're going to see it basically shake for every time it sees the book. Now, I kind of had to play with this, and I kind of had to play with this. Not, not this equation. I kind of had to play with this to get it right. Um, but again, 
some of this is trial and error. It would make sense that it's zero, but for some reason, zero didn't give me the exact count. Um, but then again, if I kept playing with it, I could figure out why. But basically, I'm counting the number of times in season books, and then it shakes. So it basically tells me that's how that's how the robot tells me what its count got up to. So let's see. This is it. And the other thing you'll see is over here, I'm going to have my debug because debug is crucial for understanding this stuff. And I want to see what my counts are. Now, one of the things with integers is that if I want to debug and see what the integer value is, I have to pause the program, right? So I'm going to run this video and you're going to see I'm going to pause it. And then all of a sudden the word count will come up and it'll tell me its value, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't do that while it's running. You have to pause it. But still, debug, extremely valuable tool for seeing what's going on, right? And I don't think I could have written this program as quickly as I did if I wasn't able to debug. So here we go. We're running it. It waits two seconds. Starts spinning. Sees the book once. Sees the book twice. Now we paused it. And over here, we could see the count's at two. It saw it twice. Let's keep running it. Three. Four, five. So five times we pause it, we look, does it five. Now it's going to shake and it's going to tell us how many times it saw it. Four, I, I think I counted wrong. I think that was five. So you go back and look and, and don't worry about my count. I think it shook five times. So there it is. Actually, you know what? We'll back it up and we'll just make sure that was five shakes. But I'm pretty sure it was. I think I counted too late. So it's five, and now let's see, one shake, two shakes, three shakes, four shakes, five shakes, six shakes. All right, so still has to get tinkered with there, but I think that's because I said greater than negative one, so I got an extra shake in there. Um, so I think I just have to put this, instead of saying, wow, it's greater than negative one, if I think if I just changed that to zero, which would make more sense, it would probably work better. Um, but again, I could play around with this and I could make it work, but you could still see what it's doing, right? So I've used the counter two times to, to count, right? Or I've used an integer as a counter twice and I've counted two different things. I've counted how many times the robot did something and I also counted what the sensor's doing, how many times the robot saw something. Um, so both are valuable ways of doing something. Okay, there is a video on counters. Make sure it makes sense. Um, Look at the comments if I left comments on yours, and then I will be giving you a new um, challenge um, on using an integer as a counter, right? And what people did worked out fine. The people that turned in the assignment, um, not say everyone did it perfect, but uh, but the format seemed to be easily followed by people. Um, if you don't want to keep this stuff on YouTube, then after I put a grade down, you're welcome to erase it, um, or just you know you leave it on until the end of the year. It's no big tragedy. But uh, we are looking for you to show me your code, um, write in words what you expect it to do, and then show me the video. Now, this next challenge, I'm going to tell you what I expect it to do, so all I'm going to need is the code in the video. But I do want to see what code you wrote, and then I do want you to show me, hey, here it is, I could show you. And that doesn't work in pictures, right, because this isn't a challenge that the computer is going to tell you you're successful. You're going to show me you're successful by making the video. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can just, again, hold your phone up to the screen and record it that way, which is probably easiest for people. Or what I use uh, myself is what's called ice cream recorder. Ice cream, the stuff you can go buy with sprinkles and things like that, right? And it's free as long as your videos stay under five minutes. And this video should stay under, you know, 30 seconds. So you could, you certainly can download ice cream recorder and it'll record your screen and it works out very well. And then allows you to post and do whatever you want.